All right then gang, so hopefully by now you've already installed Android Studio on your computer. But if you've not, I'm going to leave the link to where you can download it down below. You can go ahead and do that. The next thing we need to do is set up Android Studio to work with Flutter and Dart. So we're going to crack open Android Studio. And in fact, the first thing we're going to do is create an Android emulator so that we can test our Flutter apps on that. So go to Configure and then go to AVD Manager, which stands for Android Virtual Device Manager. And we're going to create a virtual device. And a virtual device is just like having some kind of Android device, like a phone or a tablet, on your computer. So we don't need the physical device. We can test it all on our computer. So I'm going to create a virtual device. And we can choose from a plethora of different devices right here. I'm going to go with the Nexus 6 and click Next. Then we have to choose a system image, so the version of the operating system. I'm going to go with Pi because in the past when I've used Q, I've had a couple of problems with running the app. So I'm going to go with Pi for now so there's no problems and click on Next. And then I'm going to name this. In fact, I'll keep the name Nexus 6 API 28. 28 is the version number of the system image. And down here, I'll say graphics is going to be hardware. That's just going to cause a bit of faster rendering so we have a better experience when we're testing the app. Okay, so now click on finish and this is going to create this virtual device for you. Now, if this is your first time doing this, it probably will take a couple of minutes to install this. I've done this before, so everything's already installed on my computer. But anyway, now we have our virtual device installed. All right then, so the next thing I like to do is to install a couple of plugins. And these plugins are gonna help us inside Android Studio when we're creating Flutter apps. So head to configure again, then go to plugins and make sure you're on the marketplace up here and search for Flutter and press enter. Now it's probably gonna be the first entry that you see right here, this Flutter package. And what this does is basically install a load of tools into Android Studio, which are going to help us when creating Flutter applications. And it's also going to add another option over here on the start screen of Android Studio to create a new Flutter project, which is nice. So I'm going to install that. It does have another dependency, which is the Dart plugin. So that's the other plugin we want. So click on yes to install that as well. It's just going to take a couple of minutes to do this. Once it's done, just make sure you click on this Restart IDE over here. That's going to restart Android Studio, and hopefully we should see that new option now when it starts up again. Cool, so now we see this Start New Flutter Project. So let's click on this to create a new Flutter project. And we get these different options right here. We're just going to stick with a Flutter application. That's what we want to create. So click on Next. Then we need to give this a project name. I'm going to call this My App. And then down here, the project location, we can choose a place to store this. Now, at the minute, mine's been stored in this long-winded directory right here. I'm going to change that because I'd like to store it inside a different drive. So let me just scoot these up and then go into my D drive, open that, and then into apps. That's where I'm going to store my applications. But you can store it wherever you want on your computer. Okay, so you can give it a description if you want to, and then press Next. And this company domain, this is basically just so it can give your package a name using this. It's like an identifier for your package. If you don't have one, you can make one up. Uh, you know, you do your name, something or other, .com or something like that. And then click on finish. So once it's loaded that, you should see something like this. I'm just going to cross off that for now and cross this as well. And I'm also going to zoom in here so we can see this code. OK, so this is basically a sample app that Flutter has created for us. Now, before we start to even look at this code in this project, I just wanted to highlight a couple of settings for Android Studio because yours might not look like this when you first open it. So I've gone for a dark theme and to get that, you need to go to file and then go to settings. And then if you go to appearance and behavior at the top, open this up and go to appearance, the theme right here. I've got selected Darkular, so if you want to choose that, you can do. By default, I think it's one of these, maybe IntelliJ at the bottom. You can also set your custom font and font size. Now, I'm just going to crank this up to 18, and this is the UI font size, so that all these things over here, you can see a little more clearly. So I'm going to apply that just to make it a bit bigger for you. And then down here as well, you can go to the editor and choose the font for that. And I'm actually going to crank this up to 24 as well, just so that when I'm writing code later on, you can see that more clearly. 
Okay, so let's apply those changes. And there's loads of other changes and settings in here that you can make as well. I'm not gonna bore you with all of those, but if you want to search for something, you can just do that at the top. All right, so let's close down this guy and have a little look at the folder structure. Now, at first glance, especially when you open this, it can be a little off-putting because there's so many different files and folders, but it's really quite simple. First of all, we have our app folder. I call it my app, and that's where all of our source code eventually is gonna go. And we also have this external libraries, which is for any kind of external library that we install that our app depends on. Okay, so inside my app, we can see we have an Android folder and also we have an iOS folder. Now these are platform specific folders. So anything to do with Android, like icons for Android devices would go in there and anything to do with iOS would go in there. We're gonna leave those for now. This lib folder, this is where 99% of our coding will take place. All of our source code for our application is gonna go in here. And in fact, this main.dart file, which is here, that is the code for the dummy app that we get when we first start a Flutter project. So again, 99% of the stuff we do is gonna be inside this lib folder and you can pretty much ignore the rest for now. Then we also have this test folder. This is for any kind of test files for testing the application. That is kind of beyond the scope of this series because this is a beginner series. So I'm actually gonna delete this for now. So if you right click, you can then go to delete down here and delete it. And then we have some configuration files down here for our project as well. So really, it's not that complicated. We're gonna be doing most of the work in here. Occasionally, we're gonna be going into these files down here and possibly in the future into these but not much, okay? So that is the folder structure. And like I said, everything goes in here that we're gonna be doing, including this main.dart file. Now, when you first look at this, you're gonna think, hmm, this doesn't look simple, but really, you know, 80% of this is comments look, and it's telling you what it does. But if we just take a little look at this, we can see that basically, all we're doing is creating a class down here, and inside that class, we're building a widget tree. So we can see this right here, that's a widget, and this is a widget, this is a widget, this is a widget, this is, and so forth. And that's all it's doing, it's building a widget tree. Now don't worry, if you don't understand all this, uh, we're gonna learn all these bits and pieces as we go forward. But I do want to show you what this looks like in our Android device. So remember, we created that virtual device. We can now open that by clicking on this no devices at the top and selecting the device that we installed. So now we have this device over here. What we could do is perhaps preview this dummy app inside this device. So I'm just gonna make some room for this over here. Close that, that was just my videos. And then move this over here. And now to preview this application over in this device, we just need to click this play button right here. So click on that. And the first time you do this, it's gonna take a little while to do especially this bit when it says initializing Gradle. So just be patient, give it two minutes, and then eventually we're gonna see a preview of the app on this device. All right then, so now we can see this little preview of this application now inside this device. And it's very simple, we just have an app bar at the top, then this little bit of text, and if we click on this button, it increases this number. So not really much of a fun app, but it does show you in the code the basics, I suppose, of Flutter. All right then, so let's take now a little closer look at this code and see if we can make any sense of it whatsoever. So I'm gonna minimize this console and also click on this project tab and that's gonna hide this file structure right here. So we get a bit more room for the actual code. So what we have over here, let me just zoom in a little more, is an import statement at the top. We're just importing Dart. And then we have this main function. Remember, I said that the main function was the first function that fires when the Dart file starts. So that is firing and then it's returning in an arrow function, this run app function over here. So this run app function is starting our app. It's running the app. And inside we pass this thing right here my app now the thing we pass in that is going to be a widget and it will be the root widget of our application so we're saying here the root widget should be my app and we define that widget down here remember before we said that widgets are just classes so we're creating a class called my app which extends stateless widget now don't worry too much if you don't understand all of this for now just know that we're basically creating a new widget called my app Okay, and that is the root widget. So 
inside here we have a load of code i'm not going to go through it all now we'll talk about it later as we build our own app but we have this build function which is building our application and we're returning a widget in here called material app so the material app widget is a widget which is kind of like a wrapper and it allows us to do a lot of material design widgets inside it like this and this so inside that material app widget we have these different properties a title a theme and we also have this home property now this home property is saying okay well what widget should load on the home screen and right here we're saying well we'll load this widget and we're passing a bit of data into that widget as well so this widget down here is my home page extends stateful widget we have some code here again don't worry too much about that and down here we have again the build function and that is building our widget tree inside it a scaffold an app bar which is this thing over here we have a text widget inside that we also have the body property which is the actual content of the screen we have a center widget to centralize everything a column which columnizes things and then down here we have some text for this we have text for the counter itself and at the bottom we have a floating action button as well so this is basically just building a widget tree of content for the screen so again don't worry too much about this i'm just giving you a quick overview now but i know it's coming at you pretty hard and pretty quick so what we're going to do is actually delete all of this so let me grab all of that delete it because we're going to start from scratch and in fact, I'm going to delete this thing over here as well. Now, at the minute, if we try to run this, it's not going to work because we're not passing run app a root widget. So let's do that. Now, I could make up my own class, my own widget like we saw in the dummy code. But instead, what I'm going to do is just place in the material app widget right here instead. And we can do this. We can use this as our root widget. And what this is basically going to do is allow us to create a blank app and use Google Materials design features inside this application. It's like a wrapper for the rest of our widgets in the app. OK, so let's open up this material app. So inside our widgets, we can specify different properties, like I said before. So what I'm going to do for now is just specify the home property. And this home property is going to have inside it a text widget. So we say text like so, and this creates a text widget for us. And inside this text widget, we can pass a string and I'm just going to say, hey, ninjas, like so. And after this, I'm going to place a comma because commonly we have different properties inside our widgets and they're comma separated. So if I wanted to do another property, I could do it after this. They have to be comma separated. So it's always good practice to put a comma after your property value over here. So right now we're saying, okay, run the app, use this material app as our root widget. And this material app is gonna act as a wrapper for the rest of our widgets inside it. Now the home of our material app is going to be just a text widget. So we're saying the home screen at the minute in its entirety is just going to be a text widget. And that is going to say, hey, ninjas. OK, so let me now preview this over here. In fact, if you go to run over here, you can just do a hot reload and that's going to do the same trick. So if we press that now, we can see, hey, ninjas looking very ugly in the top left corner over here. OK, then, so now we have Android Studio up and running and we have a pretty blank slate for our app. Let's take this one step further and start adding more widgets inside our app.